welcome to Inspirational Tuesdays. Um, I'd like to start off with a prayer. Thank you for your Father God for allowing me to be where I'm at, Father God, that's before you, Father God. I ask you to have your way with me, Father God. I ask you to use me as a little vessel this day, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. I ask you to do away with me, Father God, and allow you to have your way, Father God. I ask that you give me godly wisdom, godly knowledge, and godly understanding, and just lift me, Father God. Lift me up close to you. And these things I ask in your name, that I do have faith and do believe. That has already been done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about that D-O-N-E, done. I'm going to give you a Tell you about that. Arrived at or brought to an end. One more question. As people would say, one more question. And we're done. Other words for done is completed, finished, ended, concluded, no more. Those are different words for done. So how do we use done? Done is the past tense. First of all, the verb do. The word done is usually alongside have, has, or had in a sentence. I'll give you an example. Like I've done all the hard work. get you a little closer what I mean by that. So what does the Bible say about that? Well, Jeremiah 29 11 states, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Meaning, Christians facing difficult situations today can take comfort in Jeremiah 29 11 knowing that it is not a promise to immediately rescue us I'm going to say that again Jeremiah 29 11 that's the comfort we can comfort in that knowing that it is not a promise to immediately rescue us from a hardship or suffering but rather a promise that God has a plan for our lives and regardless, regardless of our current situation he can work through it to prosper us and give us hope and a future So what did God say about hardship and suffering? That's basically, you can use that in, in that situation. People say when they go through, through stuff, they're like, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm just tired. I can't take no more. Just, I'm done with this. But I'm gonna tell you what God said about hardship and suffering in the midst of which your, in the situation that you're in. Well, in James 1.12, blessed is the man who remains. I'm going to say that again. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood. So God wants you to stand still in the midst of with the situation that you're going through. He just wants you to just stand there. Stood the test and he will receive the crown of life. You will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Give you a little better understanding. 
Blessed is the one who preserves, who preserves under the trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. In the midst of what you're going through, don't think that God don't have you there for a purpose. There's a reason why he got you in the situation that you're in. So he can get the glory. But also to see if you're going to be able to withstand so you can be happy at the very end. This race is not for the swift, but the one that endures the race is going to be the one. So don't rush this, the situation that you're in. God got you there for a reason. It is written that your life is written in the book of life. The book of life records forever all people Consider, consider righteous before God. Back to what I was telling you. God has you there for a purpose. See, God already knew what you're going to go through. He already knew that. You didn't, but he did. But he just want to know, are you going to stand? Are you going to praise and worship him? in the midst of the situation that you're in? Are you going to glorify the Lord? Are you going to be like the situation I'm in right now? I'm just going to bounce back. This ain't nothing. I know God. God got me. If he's saying I'm in this, this, this uh, situation is supposed to be, I got to endure it. Job went through the same situation. Why can't we? We are like, we can't go through no crucial experience. We just want to be quickly, we want to quickly get out of that situation. And God said, no, this is not that type of situation. I need you to stand, pray, meditate on me through this situation. That book of life is something that God already ordained. You already, he already ordained to say it in the book of life that you're going to go through this. And give you a little uh, understanding in Daniel 12 and 1, and Enoch 47 3, it tells you that. The ancient of the day is described as seated upon his throne of glory with the book or the book of life of the living be open before him. So if God said, said it, it's done, it's done. If he said this situation that you're in, then He's told you that it's already done. We need to get an understanding on if God told you, gave you confirmation, or somebody gave you confirmation on this situation, this, this too shall pass. So meaning that it's already been done. We got to have that mindset that it's already done and move on. We cannot be stuck in that same area because God is saying, I need you to move on because the enemy wants you to be stuck in that area. God wants you to move on. So when he says it's done, put it in your mindset that it's done. 
It's just the same. He said, this too shall pass. So God said, I'm, gonna get, I'm taking you to and from this situation. He's going to let he's giving you a cheat sheet knowing, letting you know that this is it's going to end sometime. So if he's saying that this is going to ha happen sometime, why don't you give God the glory? Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for it's being done. And move on. I understand that it's hard. But nothing is impossible when you got God by your side. That's why he said meditate on my word. You got to find things in your Bible that's going to get you by until your season is over. Because once you do that, he's going to give you joy, peace through the circumstance. And you will already be living like it's already done. He will have you in a different, while you're going through that situation that you're going through, you're going to be already in a different situation. So you ain't going to be really paying attention to what was really going on at that time because you won't be in something different. And then if that was serious, he gonna tell you to move on. When God whispers, it is done into your hearts, it is because it is done. Just because we choose to act insecure and ask for more confirmations does not mean we will receive them. So why do we keep asking God to give us confirmation about stuff that he already said was done? If he ain't giving you no no sign or no confirmation or sending somebody your way about that situation. He's telling you right then that it's done. Move on. So whatever God says will come to pass. Whatever God has said concerning your will surely comes to pass only if you keep the faith and are patient. That's one of the biggest things. In the situation that this any situation that we in, we it's hard for us to keep pay to have a hard for us to keep pay to have patience. Even me, it's hard for me to have patience. But when God said, "If you meditate on my word and you delight yourself in me," God already know what you need of, and He would give you patience through the circumstance. give you patience. He will work through the work things work these things out for you concerning your life. If one does not have faith, then that person has fear. If one does not have faith, then that person has fear fear and fear turns God off God said you meditate, meditate on my word God have he said I haven't given you the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind so the situation that you're going through he already said this this tells this is shall pass. He already said that. So he already saying it's already done. You shouldn't have no fear. Fear should not be in it. You should not be scared. You should not be worried. You shouldn't it, there shouldn't be no discomfort in it. I mean, in a sense, it should in a little bit. And that's something that he wants you to be fearing. He wants you to fear. God don't want you to do that. 
He wants you to stand in the midst of the situation and know that God is able to do, able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all things. God can do the impossible and make it possible. So when God says it's done, it's done. That scripture, for God has even given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1 and 7. If you're going through a situation, learn about that. And put that in your spirit. Keep saying that to yourself. That was one of the biggest scriptures that I have learned. Because that's one of the things that I really like. Been, I'm going through fear of this situation ain't going to end. Fear of who won't pass away. Fear of everything. It's a lot of things. But God hasn't given me the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And if I can meditate on God's word, then he will tell me why this person passed. He will tell me why this circumstance is going. He will tell me different things about this thing. I just got to trust and obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. The Bible commands that we give thanks in all circumstances. Bible commands that we give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians 5 and 18. So my title was done. But it was really it's already done. Your life has already been established before you, before time. God already knew what you was going to go through. God already knows you won't come out of that situation. So he just wants you to align yourself up what he already have told you. And what he has told you that this too, this too shall pass. That is only for a season. And I'm going to get ready to let you know. It's already done. Quit taking yourself over and beyond the circumstance. It's already done. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father God, thank you for allowing me to be used by you, Father God. Thank you for giving me the word today, Father God, and allowing me to tell your people that it's already been done. And God, keep allowing them to know that, Father God, that these messages, Father God, is only to enlighten them and to make them stronger, Father God, and encouraging them to get closer to you, Father God. Father God, I pray right now, Father God, that they will receive godly wisdom, godly knowledge, and godly understanding, Father God. I pray right now that you are going to use them like you are using me, Father God, and give them the words that they can go back and write it down and get an understanding about it, Father God. I pray that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father God, that you will keep them hidden above your wing as they become, as they transform into the person that you entitled them to be. And that is a mighty warrior for, of God. Thank you, Jesus. And these things I ask in your name that I do have faith and do believe that has already been done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.